Welcome to Turning Tuesday. As you've noticed in my last couple of videos, there's a bit more that goes into the craft than just throwing a piece of wood on the lathe. I'm going to showcase some of my favorite pieces today and hopefully show you what I look for in my collection to get the best products possible. Please enjoy. Starting off strong is a pen blank that I've already prepared. I've drilled it out, I've put the brass barrel in. Now, this one was chosen because of a strong sap inclusion that was running really close to the center. I did cut this down to try and get that as close to center as possible while keeping it inside the blank. If you go too close to center and get it directly through the center, it can weaken the blank. And next thing you know, I've got one exploding on the lathe. So as you can see here, there's a really light side on the left and a dark side well, it's now on the left. There's a light side and a dark side to this piece and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Doesn't mean it'll turn out, but it's worth a crack. So now here's a comparison of the thin end of a uh, pen that's been turned down. As you can see, that sap inclusion would be in skirting right alongside and make for a really nice inclusion. Here's a piece of an old fence post. Uh, I chose this one out to show because it's got that beautiful sap inclusion. I think I'll be able to get four or five pens out of that sap inclusion. I'm not entirely sure, but for right now, it's too big for my table saw. I'm gonna have to borrow someone's bandsaw, I suspect. This piece of Tasmanian oak is beetle back as well as a sap inclusion. So I chose this one specifically as a single piece pen. I just believe the contrast is gonna work really well. I'm gonna to have to be very careful because when I drill this one out, there's a very high likelihood of it exploding. So this is an unsuspecting piece of wood. Until you look closely, you see the waveforms running up the piece of wood? That indicates that it's probably fiddleback. And as we turn, you see them very evenly spaced. This one should make for an absolutely gorgeous pen once polished. This one's another Tasmanian oak with inclusion. I'm not entirely sure how this one's going to go. I can't see the start and stop of the sap. I suspect they join, which means it could explode. This is a bundle of bolly gum. I'd never heard of these. I love the lace type pattern, almost like it's a she oak. I'm excited to turn these. I picked these up from a local wood merchant. Here's a multi pack that I also picked up from the wood merchant. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to the purple heart, especially. I love this piece with the dark spots. I think it's going to be really interesting. This one's mostly straight grain. It has got the growth there, so it's got the knot. Could be interesting. Looks like there may be a little sap inclusion on the left. I really don't know, but I'm going to give it a crack and see what happens. I'm hoping to do this one as a single piece pen. This is a piece of Tasmanian oak. It came off from where a knot was, so it should make for an interesting pen. The grain patterns are going absolutely everywhere. It's a very wild grain. I'm very excited about this one. I'm gonna do it as a single pen. And yeah, I don't think that sap inclusion's deep enough to get anywhere. Chose this one from the wood merchant locally, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it, or it might just sit there for a while, but. There's quite a bit of wild grain, so it could be interesting. And here's one of my prize pieces. This is an ancient red gum. I've cut this down into two blanks, and I'm hoping to use the offcuts for a nice accessory piece. This is Fiddleback Red Gum, and yeah, it's absolutely stunning. I don't think the video does it any justice of just how dark it is. It is absolutely stunning. Almost jet black. 
I'm very excited to turn it. This one's just a piece of bread gum. Nothing overly special to it. I just like the colour. This yarn came in a multi-pack. Not entirely sure what this wood is. I've never seen it personally. There is a burn mark. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go on the lathe. There's also some deep cracks. There's a piece of myrtle, which I believe is spalted. Could come up an absolute treat once turned. That not running along the side could make for a very interesting wild grain as well. This is a plank of black heart sassafras i am very interested to see how this one comes out it does seem to have worm or borer trails throughout so not sure sasage orange is going to be interesting this is absolutely one of my favorite pieces i just never seen an orange so vibrant i absolutely love it so i had to show it off in quite detail as you can tell, it comes from somewhere near a branch because there is wild grain. It's also cut on a slight angle. But yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. This one's an off cut from the joinery. Not entirely sure how this is going to come out. I'm going to take the uh, sides, each side of the circle off and turn it into blanks, hopefully keeping that sap inclusion. This is a red mallee burl. I've already cut this one up. It cut down to four pen blanks. And I think they're going to come up an absolute treat. I do love how there's the dark and light. I'm very excited to turn this one. I'm not sure which wood this one is. It has got some interesting grain patterns. It's also got... A sap inclusion running through the center. This could be interesting. One of those sides is going to have to come off when it gets cut down to square anyway. So that will offset it from the center and create a really nice inclusion for a pen. This one's a bit too big for my table saw at the moment. So I'm not going to get a chance to cut this one down. But that sap inclusion is going to be very interesting when I get there. Anyway, these are some of the reasons why I choose the pieces of wood that I choose. Primarily because they've got something of interest and not just a plain piece of wood.